Brothers and sisters, as was mentioned last week and uh, earlier uh, this morning, uh, today we have the opportunity of participating in the Lord's Supper. We say participating uh, because Jesus is the host of this feast. Though we may not see Him with our physical eyes at this very moment, nonetheless, He is here. And He is the host. And so it is not I who host us. It is not the elders and deacons, although the elders and I will serve. But we are guests at the table as well. This morning... We wanted to remind you of a couple of things before we get going uh, too far into this. And that is, first of all, if you uh, brought your own element today, uh, that is perfectly okay. If you were uh, uncomfortable receiving the elements that were prepared. Uh, that being said, these elements were prepared with due care and caution. And so uh, they should be safe. But Whatever you are comfortable with at this time is perfectly fine. Also, wanted to remind you, it's been uh, a long time since we had many children here at uh, the Lord's Supper, and it's wonderful to have you. Parents, if you have spoken with your children and have, uh, have understood from them that they, in a level that is appropriate for their age, uh, understand what the Lord's Supper is about, they are welcome to participate uh, at your uh, discretion in this feast. As we prepare, I thought we would look this morning at a couple of the question and answers that are listed for us in the Heidelberg Catechism concerning the Lord's Supper. And this is what it says in Lord's Day 28, question and answer 75. How does the Holy Supper remind and assure you that you share in Christ's one sacrifice on the cross and all in all His benefits? In this way, Christ has commanded me and all believers to eat this broken bread and to drink this cup in remembrance of Him. With this command come these promises. First, as surely as I see with my eyes the bread of the Lord broken for me and the cup shared with me, so surely His body was offered and broken for me and His blood poured out for me on the cross. Second, as surely as I receive from the hand of the One who serves and taste with my mouth the bread and cup of the Lord, given me as sure signs of Christ's body and blood, so surely He nourishes and refreshes my soul for eternal life with His crucified body and poured out blood. Moving on then to question and answer 81, we read these words. Who should come to the Lord's table? Those who are displeased with themselves because of their sins, but who nevertheless trust that their sins are pardoned and that their remaining weakness is covered by the suffering and death of Christ. And who also desire more and more to strengthen their faith and to lead a better life. Hypocrites and those who are unrepentant, however, eat and drink judgment on themselves. Brothers and sisters, the Lord's Supper is such a beautiful time. It is beautiful in so many ways. It is beautiful because of the humanity of Christ who experienced all that we go through except without falling to sin and falling to temptation. And at the same time, His divinity, His, His Godness, 
One together with the Father and the Spirit. It is beautiful because God in Jesus Christ incarnate came down and experienced our lives and died for us. Suffering at our hands and being raised again from the dead for our sakes. The conqueror of sin and death. It is beautiful because in this feast there is both bitterness and sweetness. There is the bitterness of knowing that it was our sins that caused His life, death, and suffering to be necessary. And there is joy because His life And suffering and death were not the end of the story, but rather He rose again. And in so doing, He adopted us into His family and brought us in as pure and spotless because His grace washed over our sins and made us whole. Brothers and sisters, This is a beautiful feast. And it is certainly not a feast that is for those who believe themselves to be perfect. It is also not a feast for those who in and of themselves believe themselves to be good enough. As we talked about last week, there is really no such thing as good enough apart from God. God requires absolute perfection of us. But praise be to God, in this feast, we are reminded that Jesus, as the perfect One, stood in our place. He is perfection for us. And so if you humbly are willing to receive from Jesus, the perfection you could never acquire for yourself, then you are welcome at the table. I'm going to invite the servers, the elders, to come forward at this time. And in a moment, we will receive these elements. We will pass the plates down the rows as we used to, so we don't need to have the elders going in between the rows like we have had for uh, communion. So you can just pass the plates. Uh, The bread is in separate containers for uh, your benefit, uh, as are the cups as always. Brothers and sisters, On the night that Jesus was betrayed, He took the bread and He broke it, saying, this is My body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of Me.
body of Christ for you today is this. You're the body of Christ for me as well. Brothers and sisters, take, eat, remember, and believe that the body of our Lord Jesus Christ was given for the complete forgiveness of all our sins. At the end of the supper, Jesus took the cup and blessed it and said to his disciples, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. blood of Christ for you, Henry. Take, drink, remember, and believe that the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ was poured out for the complete forgiveness of all our sins. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits, 
who heals your diseases. Praise the Lord. Thank you, gentlemen. We will sing in response. So please rise and let us worship, continue to worship the Lord our God, our Savior.